So if you can accept that that's going to happen, it makes the journey a lot easier. Lot. I lost 30 kilos, yes, but my maintenance weight or where I got to has fluctuated so much. So next time you are berating yourself or kicking yourself thinking that you failed because you missed a workout, come back to this, remember it, screenshot it, whatever you need to do because you have not failed. It is as simple as that. Weight loss is definitely not easy, but the amount of information out there makes it so much more complicated than it has to be. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through the three, and I mean only three, things that you need to focus on to successfully lose weight for the long term. So those three things are nutrition, exercise, and consistency. And I will go into a little bit more detail in a second, but I actually haven't made any notes for this video. I'm just gonna to talk to you the way I would talk to a client. And the reason for that is because we take those three basic principles to be able to create a sustainable calorie deficit. Now, we can manipulate those principles and I can sit and tell you hundreds of different ways in which you can manipulate them, but it doesn't really matter because what will actually lead to successful weight loss is that you can create a sustainable calorie deficit by manipulating those different aspects in a way that works for you and your lifestyle so that you can maintain it. Now I can't do that through the camera because obviously I don't know everyone's individual lifestyles and their journeys and what they like, what they don't like and their history and all the rest that goes into it. But at the end of the day, this is a long-term lifestyle change, not something that's just gonna happen overnight. So weight loss is always going to be a little bit of a learning process, just like anything else that we try to do. We're gonna be trying different things, seeing if they work. If not, we just adapt them, twist the dials a little bit. And ultimately the goal is to find a fulfilling and healthy lifestyle which feels like it works for you. Okay, so before we get into those three points, I want to briefly touch on why we would be manipulating those, and that is so we can create a sustainable calorie deficit, as I mentioned before. So I'm gonna try and give you a very, very quick overview. I have other videos on this if you want to go and check them out that are in much more detail. But if your goal is to lose body fat, very simply, all you need to do is create a calorie deficit. Now, when I say calorie deficit, simply what we're talking about is having less energy or calories coming in than you are expending. So we've obviously got the amount of energy or calories that we consume every single day through what we eat and what we drink. And then we've got the amount of calories that our body burns. And we term this as a total daily energy expenditure or your TDEE. Like I said, I've got loads of videos on this, so you can check it out in a bit more detail but essentially our TDEE or the way our body burns energy is through different factors. So we've got our thermic effect of feeding, that just simply means the amount of energy it's used to digest our food and use it within our body. Then we've got our basal metabolic rate, and that means if you just woke up and lay in bed all day and did nothing, how much energy your body would require or how many calories your body would burn. We've also got our exercise, the one that people traditionally think of, so that's our planned activities such as going for a run, going for a walk, going to the gym, whatever it might be. And then the last one is our non-exercise activity. So for example, that's me fidgeting, or going and doing the groceries, doing the housework, cooking my dinner, whatever it might be that's not actually planned and structured activity. So that's it, we've got energy that comes in and then we've got energy that goes out. Now if the energy that comes in is equal to the amount of energy that goes out on an average, that means over time we're just going to maintain the same weight. We're not gonna gain weight, we're not going to lose weight, it's just going to stay the same. If we have more energy coming in than we are expending, over time we would expect to see weight gain because because we have extra energy that is just being stored in our body. And then finally, if you have less energy coming in than your body is expending, over time, if you're consistent with that, we would expect to see weight loss because your body will still need to find that energy from somewhere. So if your goal is to lose body fat, we want to create a calorie deficit. We want less calories coming in than our body is expending. It is as simple as that. So you may see lots of information about hormones and sleep and all this sort of stuff that comes into it. And yes, while well, aspects of that do have an impact, ultimately to boil it down to the very basics and all that you need to focus on initially, focus on creating a sustainable calorie deficit. However, is easiest for you. So how do we create a calorie deficit? Well, we know we've got energy coming in and we know we've got energy coming out. And essentially what we want to do is tip those scales. So we can have a look at either the energy coming in or the energy going out and we can see how we can manipulate that. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is energy coming in. And that is probably one of the most important aspects to fat loss 
nutrition. If you're trying to lose weight, you've probably heard the saying, you can't out train a bad diet. And essentially what that is saying is that if you are going to consume a lot of calories, you are gonna to have to be working out a heck of a lot to try and burn that off, and that will not be sustainable or healthy in the long term. If your goal is to lose body fat, then instead of focusing on exercise, which we'll go into in a second, your best bet is to focus on creating a healthy and sustainable calorie deficit through what you're consuming. By the way, I'm using calories and energy interchangeably because when we're talking about energy within the body and consuming it through food, we're talking about calories. It's a unit of energy. So creating a calorie deficit through nutrition essentially just means we need to reduce how much we're consuming or how much energy we're taking on. Now, if I put a stranger in front of you and said, we need to take this person and we need to reduce their energy intake, there would be hundreds of different ways in which you can do this. And this is where we start seeing lots of different diets crop up. So we've got intermittent fasting or 5-2. We've got paleo, we've got keto. There is endless options of diets out there. One thing that they've all got in common is that they work by putting the person into a calorie deficit. And if that works for them and they're able to sustain it for a period of time, then they're gonna lose body fat over time. And that's where the consistency comes in, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. So if you're sitting there and your goal is to lose body fat and you're feeling totally overwhelmed overwhelmed and confused, all I want you to think about is how can I reduce how much energy I'm consuming through what I eat and what I drink. You definitely don't have to have a lot of knowledge about nutrition. I definitely didn't and I've made videos on this too. When I started to lose weight I had absolutely no clue and simply what I did was took what I was already eating, I didn't change anything other than I started to slowly reduce the portion sizes and I made some simple switches as I got a little bit more confident with what I was doing. A really quick and easy example of that is my coffee. So I used to drink like a large latte with three sugars and I reduced the size I was drinking. Then I started to reduce the amount of sugar in it and then I switched to Americanos eventually. So over time, I was slowly reducing how many calories were in that drink without really knowing anything about calories. Of course, there are hundreds of different ways in which you can reduce calories. And what matters is that you can find a way that makes you feel fulfilled, that you can still eat the foods that you enjoy that you still feel like you're getting enough energy in and that you are getting enough energy in, but you're in a calorie deficit. And as I mentioned, and I probably will keep mentioning, this takes time to learn. So this is not something that's just gonna click into place overnight. You might try something, realize that it doesn't work for you, and then try something else. And even if you do find something that works for you, it might only work for you for a few months and then you might fall out of love with it. I go through cycles of just eating the same meals and I just love it, I get obsessed with it. And then there's a day where I just can't even bear the idea of eating that meal again and everything changes. There's been times where I just really haven't had an appetite in the morning for breakfast, so I don't eat my breakfast. Instead, I'll just have a bigger lunch and dinner. And there's times where I'll wake up and I'll just be ravenous, so I'm having big breakfasts and my meals in the later on in the day are a bit smaller. So it's always changing, your body is changing, your life is changing. So it's never quite black and white. You're gonna be tinkering around and playing with different ideas, but what you should be looking for is finding a way that feels satisfying to you. And if you struggle a little bit with something that you're doing, instead of thinking that you failed or that you can't can't do it sustainably. Try to use that as feedback as to maybe what does and doesn't work for you. So for example, if you've reduced your portion sizes overall, but you're finding that in the evenings after your dinner, you're really hungry and you're still quite snacky and that's pushing you over or taking you back up to maintenance, then you could start to think, okay, how could I stave off the hunger in the evening? Maybe I need to bulk out my evening meal with a bit more fiber or your lower calorie voluminous foods such as your vegetables and your fruits. Or maybe you should play with the timings of your meals if you could push your dinner back a little bit. Or perhaps you need to have a snack before you have your dinner. Or maybe you're just gonna stick with having a dessert in the evening and look at what your options are there. This is what I mean by there's just hundreds of different options. Use yourself as a bit of an experiment as to what's gonna work for you. Just because something has worked for a friend or it's worked for me or it's worked for another client, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And essentially what you need to do to successfully create a sustainable calorie deficit is find out a way of reducing your caloric intake that works for you. Just on a side note, if you do have a personal trainer or a coach, then they should be helping you to find out what methods work for you best. They shouldn't just be throwing a meal plan at you and telling you what to do. They should be telling you why you're doing it and also trying to help you find out what makes you tick. Okay, so our goal is to lose body fat and we've created 
or we're working on creating a sustainable calorie deficit through what we're consuming, reducing what we're eating. So that brings us on to what people traditionally think of as being the most important aspect of weight loss, and that is exercise. Now here's the thing, if you are creating a calorie deficit through what you're eating, which is gonna be the easiest and best way to do it, then you don't even need to exercise. But instead, you could just exercise for fun and for enjoyment. And I know there's some people that are sitting there going, exercise is just not fun. And I get it because I never used to exercise. I didn't get into exercise or fitness or sports or anything like that until I was about 26. And there's still a lot of things that I do not enjoy. But there is always going to be something that you can do which you enjoy. And if you can focus on exercise being about getting stronger, getting fitter, getting healthier, being able to move better, making friends, beneficial to your mental health, helping your sleep, helping your health markers. Those are some of the reasons why you should be exercising and not to aid with fat loss. Now that's not to say that exercise does not contribute to a calorie deficit. However, people often get caught up into the thinking of, I've missed a workout, I failed, my diet's ruined, I'm not gonna lose weight. Whereas if you're in your calorie deficit through nutrition, you don't even need to exercise. It doesn't even matter. You could literally wake up and sit at your desk all day and still lose weight if you're eating below your TDE. So next time you are berating yourself or kicking yourself thinking that you failed because you missed a workout, come back to this, remember it, screenshot it, whatever you need to do because you have not failed. Exercise is not a crucial part of weight loss. But there are so many benefits to it. And obviously you guys know, I love movement. I love exercise. I love the type of exercise I do, but it's not always been that way. But from my experience working with clients and seeing it in myself as well, one huge benefit to exercise is that you have another thing that you're progressing in. You have another thing that's motivating you or you're working towards. And that in itself is really, really beneficial when you're looking to lose weight because you're not always going to lose weight week on week. We would never expect that to happen. It's always gonna go up and down. Sorry, my camera card was full and I've had to change it, which means if the angles change, that's why. But also I've kind of forgotten where I was, but we're essentially talking about exercise. It is very hard dare I say, impossible to out-train a bad diet long-term. So try to look at your exercise as an opportunity to get stronger, to get healthier, to feel better about yourself, to have a little bit of you time and to have a part of your day that you enjoy. So whether that is going for a jog, whether that's going for a walk with a friend, whether that's going and throwing some heavy stuff around in the gym, try to not get too caught up in the intricacies and rather think about what you'll enjoy and what you'll be able to do long-term as that's gonna benefit you in your goals much more than doing something that you don't enjoy. I didn't really want to go into too much detail as I want this video to be kind of like a brief overview View and a more simplistic view of weight loss because ultimately that is what matters to get you going. I probably will make another video in the future or maybe another couple of videos which are more like the level two, level three version of this video where we start to add in a little bit more information. But I feel like people in their heart of hearts will still think exercise is a crucial or maybe the most important part of weight loss. So I just wanted to remind you again you don't need to exercise a specific amount of times per week. You don't need to do a specific type of exercise. Of course, there's benefits to different types of exercise. And I would always recommend that resistance training of some type is a really good, important thing to incorporate, especially for us women as we get older. But it's up to you what you do. Just have a little bit of fun and don't feel too caught up in it. It will go a long way to helping you in the long term. So know that exercise is not crucial to weight loss, but there are so many other benefits as to why you might want to incorporate it. And also, I can't go without mentioning, don't forget about non-exercise activity. It contributes more to your TDEE than your exercise does. So even if you can just generally be a bit more active, move your hands a little bit more when you're talking, stand up a little bit when you're on the phone, cook your dinners instead of order in, that's gonna go a long way to helping you as well. And that brings us on to the last point, which I think is the most important, and you guys will be so sick of hearing me say this, but it is consistency. That beautiful word, consistency. I made a post about this this week because I have had more conversations than I care to disclose about consistency in the last couple of weeks. With it being January and all, I've had friends, I've had family members, I've had clients, I've had strangers, I've had a lot of people talking about a very similar topic and that is along the lines of this. 
I have been doing everything right. I have been exercising and I have been eating less and it has been one, two, three, whatever you wanna put into that gap, weeks and I haven't lost any weight or I've only lost X amount of weight or I've gained weight. And my answer is always the same. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about seeing progress in the first four to six weeks, maybe even eight weeks. Don't even expect it. Try not to focus on it. Try to focus on building habits to creating a lifestyle that you like, to looking for those little feedbacks that we were talking about and manipulating them a little bit and finding what works for you. That is what your focus should be in the first couple of months, not counting the number on the scale and expecting to see progress straight away. I'm sure you guys know when I started losing weight, it took me a good six to eight weeks before I started seeing any significant change in my weight on the scale. And now I don't weigh myself at all. I have no interest in weighing myself because that number fluctuates a heck of a lot. It fluctuates throughout a year, but it fluctuates throughout a day, a week, a month. It's expected, and as I said, it's completely normal. We'd expect to see any changes between one to two kilos a day minimum of weight fluctuations. And of course, the weight on the scale is dictated by so many different factors, such as the weather, when you trained last, what you've eaten and when you've eaten it, whether you've been to the bathroom, how you've been sleeping, how hydrated you are. There are so many factors that are going to go into it that it's just not even worth getting caught up in the number especially at that critical time when you feel like you're putting a lot of effort into it and seeing something that you don't want to see could mean that you don't continue because ultimately continuing is what's going to bring you the success. Being able to do something long term in a sustainable way rather than in an extreme way, I promise you is what will make this work. I would say 95% of people that I know or I've seen their journeys who have successfully lost weight and kept it off have not focused on the short term. Don't get me wrong, they've tracked their weight, they've tracked their measurements, they've tracked their exercise progress and all the other things that they want to track, but they've not been caught up in constantly having to see progress. Instead, what they've done is try to create habits which will help them towards that goal and focused on achieving those habits and maintaining them whilst accepting there's going to be fluctuations in your motivation. There's gonna be times when you can't stick to those habits and you need to rein it back in again after a little while. Christmas and Easter, I'm looking at you. But the other key thing to remember is this is a lifelong journey and this is something that I talk about a lot. I lost 30 kilos, yes, but my maintenance weight or where I got to has fluctuated so much because maintenance is fluctuations. That's life, that's just what happens. It happens to me and it happens to everybody else. So if you can accept that that's going to happen, it makes the journey a lot easier. Instead of getting caught up in seeing those fluctuations and feeling automatically like you failed, if you're able to look at that, see it for what it is, which is normal, and then just keep going, just one foot in front of the other, that's all that matters. It's when you stop and you just give up and then you kind of go back into it a few months later. When we do that, we can very easily convince ourselves that it's just not working. I mean, really, I should take my own advice because I've got a keyboard in the next room which I've played once a year and somehow I don't understand why I'm not Mozart yet. But the same rules apply. You just need to be consistent. And to be consistent, it needs to be easily sustainable, which means it needs to work for you and you need to take a long-term view of it rather than thinking, I'm gonna go hard and I'm gonna do it for a short time. Cause you gotta think, even if you do achieve what you want, are you gonna be able to then sustain it from there? Probably not. So please try to focus on the long term. Take your time, enjoy the journey because it can be enjoyable. Like I said at the very beginning of the video, weight loss is not easy, but it can be a heck of a lot easier than it's being made out to be. Again, I'm gonna mention it, if you do have a personal trainer or a coach, they should be helping you with this stuff. They shouldn't be giving you a meal plan telling you to eat chicken and broccoli unless they're a dietitian. but what they should be doing is teaching you the principles around nutrition, teaching the principles around exercise, and helping you understand how you can manipulate those to work within your lifestyle and your preferences because that knowledge ultimately will lead to you being able to achieve anything that you want to in the future. Okay, so I tried to make this video as quick as possible. Feel like I didn't do too bad. One of my goals this year is to try and be a bit more succinct in what I say so you guys can let me know how I'm going because I look some of my old videos on YouTube like the first year I was making them and I talk. I mean, I know I can talk but... <laughs> 
I talk. So let me know how I went. I have no doubt that this video will probably bring up some questions. So if you have any, fire off down below or you can always head over to Instagram, message me over there or email me, whatever works for you and I'll be happy to help. But otherwise, I hope this video has helped in some way to clear out a little bit of the noise and help you feel a little bit more confident with what you're doing. And I also hope that you have a beautiful day. I'll see you guys in the next video.